Welcome to another Looney Tunes review video. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing as it helps out the channel and give this video a like if you do like it. So this review is for The Goofy Gophers, released in 1947 on the 21st of January. It had a blue ribbon reissue on the 23rd of July 1955. It's the 490th in the series and it was planned by Bob Clampett and finished by Art Davis. And now on to the synopsis. A watchdog is currently watching over a vegetable garden and tries to stop two gophers, Mac and Tosh, from eating the vegetables. Commando tactics. Sadly, the titles for this cartoon do not exist and we only have very limited information. What we do know is that Mel Blank voiced Mac, the dog, and Bugs Bunny, and Stan Freeberg voiced Tosh. And I'll have the source below on this, but four animators that have been identified in this one are Manny Gould, Don Williams, Cal Dalton, and JC Melendez. Iron? Why, no, I haven't. Well, here. Here are some musical cues that are known from this cartoon. My baking light. Uh, what's up, Doc? Now for some trivia. This short was originally planned by Bob Clampett, but he had left the studio, so Art Davis ended up completing the short. This short was somewhat of a reworking of a previous short called Go For Goofy, directed by Norm McCabe, which dealt with the farmer up against two gophers trying to steal vegetables from his garden. Let's not get nosy, bud! The Western Onion gag relates to Western Union, which at the time was a telegraph company. The gag involving the dog having a girl gopher puppet was similar to a puppet gag that was done by Clampett in the short, The Hep Cat. This is the first appearance of the goofy gophers who are named Mac and Tosh. Unlike later shorts, here they are both coloured grey, and the two characters would not be defined as they would be in later shorts. This may be due to the nature of the production being started by one director and finished by another. Bugs Bunny makes a cameo at the end, which is notable for two reasons. The only other time Art Davis would use Bugs Bunny in his short-lived unit was Bowery Bugs. The other interesting thing is that Bugs' voice here is sped up for unknown reasons. Well, uh, now I wouldn't say that. <laughs> There are no physical releases of this restoration, however you can see it on HBO Max. I cannot put the cartoon here for copyright reasons. And now onto my review. You know, for a short that was part of the transitional phase between Clampett and the Davis units, unlike the wildly inconsistent Bacal to Arms, this one was solid from start to finish. I suspect that Clamper didn't get too far with this one before Davis took over, as we don't really see much of the really wild animated moments of the last few fully completed Clamper shorts, or even the few wild moments in Bacolta Arms. 
While I can't say I'm the biggest fan of the Goofy Gophers, yeah, they're quite fun little characters making fun of this absolutely ridiculous dog. I love the dog here, and especially the way Mel Blanc just voices the character. I mean, his march in the beginning was just hilarious, and, you know, I, I and I, I'm not going to lie, he's actually one of my favourite of the, I suppose, lower tier Warner characters. I haven't seen the other Goofy Gopher shorts in a long time, so I can't really rank where this one would sit for me, but I will definitely rank them all once I take a look at the last one. And the best gag, and the one that seems to be the most Bob Clampett-like in this one, is the rocket gag involving the Gophers shooting the dog to the moon, which ends up breaking it into four pieces for some reason. Hey, it's a cartoon, you know? <laughs> you know, I'm going to give this a, a 7 out of 10 rating. I mean, it's... A bit inconsistent, but it's fun. It's fun. I quite enjoy this one. So that'll do it for this one. Thanks to everyone that's showing up on the screen here and for you to, um, for you as well for watching this video. So thanks for everyone for watching and until next time, take care.